Hi everyone, welcome to my preview of day one of Cheltenham 2024. Cheltenham is an absolute marathon, so it's not about getting the winner of the first race, the second race and the third race, it's about making a profit or an attempt at getting a profit over the whole meeting. In this video I'll give you my assessment of all the races. They're not bets for me unless I put them up on a separate bet video. So when I say that that's my selection, that's just my selection, whether I part with money on it or not is a different story and uh, I wouldn't be following any of the selections in. I wouldn't even follow any of the bets in this season to be honest. I've been doing really poorly but I'll give you my assessment of the races now normally in these videos oh, there's a lot of other people on most uh, channels and they're all giving opinions and you can pick out what you want in these videos it's my opinion and that's all you get now I may pull a rabbit out of the heart I may not so please do your own research pick your own horses and uh, you'll probably find you'll do a lot better as well so anyway, I'll get on to my assessment of all the races at Cheltenham on the Tuesday. And uh, I'll wish you all the very best of luck at Cheltenham before I start my preview. The Supreme Novice is, is such a tough race this season. It's very open. The horses at the head of the market are slight unknowns, even though they, you know, we've got the form, but really we don't know how strong a lot of that form is. Mystical Power is joint favourite. I'm not convinced by his jumping and I'm not convinced by the last race that he ran. And it's pretty similar with Tally Hill. I, I don't really like his last run either. I thought he was given an easy lead and um, yeah I don't like his jumping either really. Now Firefox has got a good chance I think. If he's back to form, he's had a long layoff since his last run, which was over further, and he was found to be lame after the race. So he will take his chance. Oswald Slade Steel, who's perhaps better over slightly further, but is running in this race to avoid the long odds on favourite in the longer race. I think if I had to put a bet on this race, now I'm not saying I'm going to, but I think... It would be my selection to take Jericho de Repine. The trainer has got history with this race. He has got an incredibly good record. People are saying that the stable are out of form. But I think at 8-1, to one, I would side with Jericho de Repine. Now, this is a really tough race, like I said at the start. So, it's not an easy opening. It's not a race where you can have a really bullish opinion. You can't be going saying... Oh, this horse will win this race because I don't think anybody really has a massively strong opinion on this race. It could be that one of the front two in the market for Willie Mullins wins this, but it's just as possible that the 14 to 1 shots like Mr. Giff and Favour and Fortune could come and win this race as well. It, it is very open without the likes of Ali Barn in it and if one gets heavily backed here, it could be wise to follow the money. But I think for my selection, I will stick with Jericho de Repine. He's not been flashy this season, but I think he's got a lot more to give. And with Henderson's record in the race, I'll just stick with Jericho de Repine. The article in many ways is very similar where a lot of the horses at the front of the market, and virtually everything has a chance in this race, you can't rule out very many. And you've got the twist in the tail, Gaelic Warrior, who's not been in the betting for this as a realistic prospect until around Friday, when they did start to mute this possibility. Now, a lot of people are going to be caught out there. A lot of people are going to feel very aggrieved if, if uh, Gaelic Warrior wins this race because they've been betting all winter on the premise that Gaelic Warrior wasn't going to be in this race. And now, if their horse finishes second, they'll feel like they've had a winner taken away from them. I do think he's the classiest horse in this race. He's got a tendency to jump 
to his right, but if he can get in the Manx horses and he can he's by far the best horse in this race. And if he doesn't lose ground at his fences, he's gonna be very hard to beat. He's got a lot of opposition. I don't like Gillette Tom, so I don't know how many times I've said that, but he's punched me in the face for it because he's won numerous races where I didn't think he would win. So, although I don't like him, plenty do, and they're making profits when I'm not. Found a 50. I just wonder if this is sharp for him. He does stay well. If he's in the lead, you know, he's going to stick at it, but I just wonder if he's classy enough to win this. I'm not sure if he is. Hunter Jarn is a good horse, but he's got the tendency to bulldoze through a fence, and that could be his undoing. Colixilos also jumps right. He's a course winner, though. So, yeah, a lot of chances. The English horses have chances here. JPR1 can at times jump impeccably. He's got a mistake in him. Matata, he jumps right. I mean, there could be carnage in this race with horses jumping right and horses are jumping left. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a really tough race to call. It really is. And I, I wouldn't be going massively in on this horse but I, again if if this was um going right handed Gaelic Warrior would be odds on to win this race so if I was going to bet in this race I'd definitely back Gaelic, Gaelic Warrior the Altima is usually won by the front of the market a meeting of the waters although up 17 pounds has got a great chance has a the golfer has two <laughs> They're Irish trained, usually a English trained horse who wins. This is a really tough race. I mean, it's a 20 runner handicap, so it's always going to be tough. Kim Bailey's got two laid out for this, Chianti Corsico and Trelon. And although the front of the market usually wins it, I'm going to take two each race stabs at this in Victorino for Venetia Williams, who. who he hasn't run that well on his last two starts, but the two starts before that where he was absolutely, you know, faultless, really. He's won those two starts really well. And Venetia Williams has got this sort of knack of bringing horses back from wins and then a couple of poor runs to win again. And at 18 to 1, I think he's big. And I think Eldorado Allen, who's not been unnoticed in the market, I think he's big as well. And he's down from the gold cap into a handicap now and he's down 10 pounds from last season so i think he's got a chance as well going against the head of the market here is a bit maybe a bit dangerous but i will take those two as my sort of two against the field now i'm not saying i'm parting with money um if there are any extra bets today uh, for tuesday then they'll be put in a separate video I think both of these are decent each way shouts, Victorino and El Dorado Allen, but I wouldn't be going crazy and I'm not sure I'll back them myself. They're just my selections. In the champion hurdle, Stateman has been winning poor races in Ireland. Easily, but poor races, beating horses like Pied Piper and Echoes in Rain and that sort of calibre of horse. I mean, the best horse he's beaten this season is the Perry Pass, and that's been a shadow of itself all season. So it's not like he's winning good races, but he is a good horse, and he should really be able to tuck these away. The opposition isn't great. Irish Point, who was going to run in a three-mile race and is now going to run in a two-mile race, I'm not sure he's going to be able to go at the speed required here for the full two miles because he's been trained to go at a lot slower pace and to quicken up. I think the horse I would like here each way or without the favourite, whatever market you want, you'd want to play him in is a Berico Lord who's won two really good handicaps and how on earth he's still on one four three I don't know because he probably would have won the county at this meeting later in the meeting but he's been rerouted into this race. I think he's the play. I do like Iberico Lord. I'd bet him without state man. I think he's around five to one. That would be my bet in this race. Um Iberico Lord, if you were having an each way lucky fifteen where you weren't really looking to get four winners, then I think he would place, but 
I'm not sure he's quite capable yet of beating State Man, although I'd like to see it. I don't think he's quite capable of that sort of performance yet, but he'd definitely be my play with the, in the place markets or in the without the favourite market. The Mayor's hired all. I have a bet running in this race. It's £30 each way and Gallimar so at 8-1. to one. That horse has absolutely no chance of winning and absolutely no chance of placing in this race, sadly. So that money has gone astray in there. Yeah, it's a large chunk of the money that you'd be putting off for out of a £400 bank. If you're betting £100 each day, that's a large chunk of uh, the money you'd be betting. So there probably won't be any more bets for the Tuesday because of the loss of this bet. In the race itself, Lossy Mouth should win. Um, but, you know, there's that nagging doubt about the distance with her. And it, it could be her undoing. It may not be. She may. I, I think she possibly is a superstar. I said that right from when I first ran, that she could be a superstar. I think if she can handle this ground and win over two miles four as easily as she's won in the past, then she is a superstar. Ashra Diamond is a good rival, a very good rival. On any slip-ups from Lossy Mouth, Ashra Diamond will take advantage. One at a price that I like in this race is Tell Me Something Girl. She should have won the Mayor's Hurdle for us two years ago at 14 to 1, but she was brought down at the second loss when she was absolutely cruising. I think she could be just getting ready to peak in this race. And I think at uh, 18 to 1, she'd be my each way play. Or back her without the front two in the market. She was about 7 to 1, which is a crazy price in that market. So at that sort of price, I'd back her without Ashley Diamond on Lossy Mouth. She'd definitely be the play in the race. Now, there are other good horses in here. The two English horses, Love Envoy and You Wear It Well, they would have each way claims, as would Hispanic Moon and Lantry Lady. But I think nearly my colours to the mast, I think I would go with Tell Me Something Girl as my each way play in the race. The Boodles, I have a bet in this race as well. £25 on Milantino at 12 to 1. It's a decent bet. I wouldn't say you can have an outstanding bet in this race. So even if you've got good price on a horse, this is an utter minefield. This is the sort of race that bookies love because they will get a result in this more than likely. Of the dangers, Nora, the other JP horse, could run well. But to be honest, this, like I say, is a minefield and everything in the race could run well. It is basically just take your uh, take your pick and pay your money here. It could go to any of the 22 runners. I do like Milantino still, but like I say, it's a minefield and um, you could pick a few and still not get one placed in this race. So, yeah, it's up to yourself really on a race like this and there really is not much between any of them and every one of them has probably been plotted up to win this race. The final race, Embassy Gardens, is, has looked a different horse this season over fences. And I think, I thought he'd be very short here, but he's 15 to 8. That's because Corbett's Cross is well fancied by, you know, big connections. JP, he's got Derek O'Connor riding, Emmett Mullins is a shrewd, shrewd trainer. So, you know, this is very difficult to pick between the top two in the market, but there are good horses down below them as well, like Salvador Siggy, Kilbeg King. Not many of these are completely out of it. It's a bit more open than it looks. I wouldn't want to pick between top two, which one would win. Embassy Gardens blew out at the meeting last season. Corbett's Cross ran out through the wing. So a really tough race to nail your colours to the mast. I would... I'd really struggle here. I'd possibly put apples away up each way. If she came back to better form than she's showed this season, and they say she has started to blossom, at 14 to 1, she could be an each way angle into this race. Whether she could possibly win, I don't know, but she probably put up a good run for a place in this race. So that's my assessment of the, the runners. I mean, it's a tough, tough day. Um, 
and it, it's made tougher when you put up a poor bet like I did and use a lot of your daily bank on one horse who's sadly not got a chance. So, yeah, moving forward, I think I'll have a very fun lucky 15. Uh, that would be on Victorino, the Biblical Lord, Apples Away, and Tell Me Something Girl. You'd be retiring if they all won, but I think they've all got reasonable chances of placing. So, yeah, I hope you enjoy day one. I have had look, and I, I, I can see a couple of possible bets on uh, Wednesday. Definitely one that I like on Thursday, and um, hopefully those prices will hold. We'll see how we get on on day one. I mean, it, it looks possible that we'll be £85 down after day one. I mean... It is a tough handicap, but who knows? Milantino could could run a big race, could win the race, and then 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 we'll be playing with the bookies' money. But yeah, it's disappointing to have only one bet on the first day, but it's only only got myself to blame for that. So uh, we'll look at trying to find good bets for uh, days two, three, and four. I want to wish you all the best of luck at the festival this season. I hope all my viewers. Have a good day one. I'll be back to you in my preview of day two, uh, probably around the same time tomorrow. So enjoy day one. Bye for now.